Welcome to Monday's Mental Mistakes. This week we're looking at the illusion of validity. Here's a simple example. Suppose you are hired by Carnegie Mellon University to conduct a pilot study in predicting the academic performance of undergraduate students. The university will provide you with some basic information on each student, their age, major, rank in their class, their upcoming course schedule, and their cumulative GPA. Previous research at the university has shown that the previous cumulative GPA by itself was the best predictor of future GPA. In addition to this data, you have the option of interviewing the students in one of three ways. Firstly, you could conduct an unstructured interview where you can ask whatever questions you want. Secondly, you could conduct an unstructured interview in which you can only ask closed questions such as yes-no questions or this or that questions. Thirdly, you could conduct an unstructured interview in which you can only ask closed questions, but where the student will answer completely randomly. In summary, you will always be given the biographical data, and you have to decide whether it would be better to 1. Have no interview 2. Interview with open-ended questions 3. Interview with closed questions 4. Interview with closed questions and random responses Rank these methods from best to worst in order of their ability to allow you to make accurate predictions of students' GPAs. If you felt that open-ended questioning was best and no interview was worst, then congratulations, you suffer from the illusion of validity like the rest of us. This exact experiment was conducted at Carnegie Mellon University, and it was found that interviewing actually reduced the accuracy of predictions. That is, no interview was the most accurate method. It was also found that interviewing with open-ended questions was actually the worst method, being less accurate than interviewing with closed questions where the interviewee gave completely random answers. I mentioned the reason for this earlier. The best predictor of future GPAs was simply the past GPAs by itself. Other information seems like it should improve our predictions, but it doesn't. Despite interviewing being inferior to purely statistical methods, people continue to feel like it gives additional useful information. This is the illusion of validity. The illusion of validity is the tendency to prefer subjective judgments even after they're shown to be inaccurate. That is, after proving that our judgments are unreliable, we still feel like they're somewhat useful. The illusion of validity makes us more likely to listen to our intuition, even when we know it's worthless. At the same time, we're unlikely to rely on purely statistical predictions. The principal way to counter the illusion of validity is to deliberately remove intuition or subjective judgments from decision making when they've been shown to be useless. Research has shown that our subjective judgments actually worsen our decision making in areas such as college admissions, hiring, finance, medical diagnoses and psychology. In many situations, statistical predictions have been shown to be superior to both expert judgment and expert judgment combined with statistical predictions. But rather than discard expert judgment, the illusion of validity ensures that people still feel like their intuition is helpful. That's not to say that intuition or subjective judgments cannot be useful, but rather that we tend to cling to them even after they've been proven otherwise. So it is quite reasonable to continue to use our intuition when no better method is available, and the intuition of genuine experts often is a reliable predictor. The illusion of validity just prevents us from fully discarding it in those situations where it isn't. The illusion of validity is particularly strong in those areas in which we are the most knowledgeable. Expertise tends to make us confident in our opinions, and if it is later found that such opinions aren't reliable, it's hard to shake our confidence. For example, psychologists and psychiatrists have long struggled to accurately predict whether criminals will re-offend when released from prison. Over the last 20 years or so, it became clear that risk assessments that excluded clinical judgement, such as the Static 99, performed better than the opinions of experts. Despite this, clinicians continue to put more faith in their own judgement than in statistical risk assessments. Similar findings have been greeted with the same response in medicine and finance. The illusion of validity is unlikely to be a fundamental cognitive bias, and it's probably the result of a number of more basic cognitive biases occurring in specific circumstances. 
Models have been proposed that explain the illusion of validity as a result of confirmation bias combined with the representative heuristic. The idea is that an enduring confidence in our ability to intuitively predict outcomes is based in a long history of apparently accurate predictions. This history is the result of paying more attention to successful rather than unsuccessful predictions, and the vicious circle that confirmation bias then creates. That is, we more readily remember our successes, and this leads us to pay more attention to future successes, reinforcing the impression that we are accurate in our predictions. In conclusion, the illusion of validity is the tendency to feel that our subjective judgments are accurate, even when they're shown they are not. Until next week, may your mental mistakes be minor.